Throughout the course of the series and in tonight's conclusion, there have been several instances of love living on and dying. But because Franklin has always been the focal point of Snowfall, it makes sense that he would want to see his love endure. This yearning is what makes watching Franklin's end so agonizingly awful. It makes sense that many viewers would want him to lead a happy life. Happy endings, however, belong in fairy tales, not real life. Franklin starts to drink himself into his stupor as he tries to cling on to what little money he has left after getting so near to his money that he could almost taste it and having his mother ruin his shot at a happily ever after. Franklin rushes inside a bar after Sissy shoots Teddy, dead to use the payphone and update Veronique. He then calls Teddy's handler Stephen, who advises Franklin that if he wants to survive, he must deliver Reuben to the CIA. The barman notices Franklin's distress and gives him a shot on the house before calming Stephen, which is the first time we've seen Franklin voluntarily consume a mind-altering substance. Franklin follows orders, turns over the KGB spy, despite Reuben's warnings not to trust the CIA, and as his world falls apart, he goes on an absolute emotional rampage. Franklin demonstrates that he is employing the same strategies Teddy used against him on his own people, shattering the rose-colored glasses. He urgently requests Leon the $3 million he's managed to save in exchange for a scheme that would make him a stakeholder in Franklin's real estate business. Leon recognizes it for what it is, attempts to persuade Franklin to think about what happened with Sissy, and declines the offer, noting that doing so would be disrespectful to her sacrifice. Franklin acts like Teddy, exclaims, I'm the reason you all got this money in the first place, and says he'll take it forcibly if necessary to get his hands on it. Franklin is compelled to take a different path because Leon is shielded by his people. Franklin then attends Sissy's trial, where she enters a guilty plea, after shouting at the courthouse that she killed a CIA agent who assisted in flooding the streets with cocaine, is denied bail, and is taken into custody. Now that she has publicly admitted her guilt and accepted her penalty, she has become a martyr. Franklin makes two visits to her while she is detained. After his life implodes once more, he suggests contesting the accusations the second time, which she rejects. Franklin discovers Veronique has been working behind his back when his business partner Paul Davis arrives at the residence to discuss what is obviously already under negotiation regarding the sale of his interest in the Spring Street development. He approaches Veronique, scolds her harshly, and then holds her by the neck to terrify her even more. Franklin makes one last haughty move, telling Veronique that he sold all the properties to the former employer of his mother out of spite, and that since he constructed it, he is free to demolish it whenever he wants. Franklin, who is still intoxicated, rushes to the bank to make another effort to access money, but discovers right away that Veronique has already withdrawn the money from the account and escaped. He returns to his mother to request that she sell the house and give him the money because he has no other options. She remains silent the entire time, and Franklin starts to lose control as he realizes he won't be getting any more from her. The frame emphasizes the division between the mother and son as the camera records their encounter. The empty space in the frame symbolizes the gap in their attitudes and relationships, and at one point, Sissy's head even gets a ring of light. He refuses to accept responsibility and is led out by a police officer while blaming her for everything. Three months later, Franklin is still living in Sissy's home, intoxicated, helpless, and in debt, and the banks are coming after him for their money. He runs across Top Notch, who is prepared to go on with his life after not being able to locate Veronique. He shares with him one final finding, Peach's location. Peaches, who was only 25 miles away and was living in squalor and bad drug addiction, relied on the money he had stolen from Franklin to make ends meet. Franklin kills Peaches in an attempt to retrieve his money and hires Miguel, a mechanic, to open the safe containing what's left of Peaches. Franklin shoots the junkie who shows up as Miguel opens the safe, adding to the difficulty of the scenario. Miguel unlocks the safe with fear and discovers only $12,000 inside. Franklin kills him as well. We glimpse everyone's life as they attempt to disassociate themselves from their actions by jumping ahead another two years. Louis is evading the DEA, which is out to catch her. With enough time having passed, Xayamar has now reached out to Gustavo, who is now employed as a wrestling coach, giving at least one of our protagonists a happy ending. A further year passes and Franklin is shown to be an alcoholic recluse who is squatting in the home amid disrepair and numerous city notices posted on the door. Since Wanda left for Ghana soon after Sissy was imprisoned, and it is hinted that Leon followed Sissy's advice and left with his wife soon after, Leon is in the city when he discovers Franklin portraying the wild local bum. 
After a lifetime, Leon and Franklin stroll through the neighborhood where we first met them. Franklin is resentful and obstinate, continuing to place the blame for his present circumstances elsewhere. They even pass by someone filming a movie on the street that closely resembles a scene with the young boys from John Singleton's Boys in the Hood. What a great way to pay homage. And how funny is it that Franklin said it wouldn't win an Oscar? The world has moved on without him. The Nenities culture that was directly impacted by the aftermath of the events of the show can be seen. After giving birth, Veronique assured Franklin that she would raise their kid properly and the curse without disclosing their whereabouts. Franklin, though, seems to be trapped in a loop as he rants hysterically about being monitored. They circle back to Cho's convenience store, where they started. In response to the Len Bias Law, which tore through the community and declared it to be Jim Crow once more, Leon informs Franklin that he has established a legal clinic to assist his people as incarceration rates continue to grow. Franklin is asked if he wants to help, but once they are outside Cho's, it is obvious that he doesn't care and instead asks Leon for money, which was what he cared about the most and what ultimately caused his demise because his pride and greed prevented him from living a happy, healthy life. The police show up at his house when they go back, prepared to confiscate it. Franklin tells Leon that he is finally free, but only on his terms, after being left with nothing at all. As Leon calls after him, he tells him that Leon is his best friend and that he is proud of him before walking away with a bottle in his hand. The sadly true story of Franklin's saint is concluded while Kendrick Lamar's pride plays on the soundtrack. What I thought about what this show means to viewers, the conclusion was depressing. The intriguing main character Franklin Saint will always be associated with TV fans as someone who they unreservedly root for. Objectivity be damned. Even though it was difficult to see, why should Franklin's story finish happily? He is the one who recognized the addictive potential of the rocked-up cocaine and persisted in distributing it to the public in order to create an empire that primarily benefited him at the expense of other people's lives. However, viewers tune in week after week, hoping he wins everything he's ever desired and more. We see his humanity above all because we understand how he feels. After all is said and done, I can state with certainty that Snowfall has cemented its place in television history as an example of this particular period in which producers are breaking new ground. The actor who plays Sissy, Michael Hyatt, claims that this was a goal of John Singleton's to convey the tale of the people, the generations as well, from a different angle what it did to people. Sadly, the majority of those who were involved in the drug trade during that time had a dismal outcome, and the series' conclusion honors this reality, despite what Franklin represents to us.